simulating the volcano. So we'll see as it gets hotter and hotter, then, and as the paper gets hotter and hotter and as it starts to dry, then we might have an eruption. Come back here. Simulation of a volcano eruption.
Holy Spirit's like the wind, where it goes and where it comes, we don't really know. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he's saying born again. So that means the second being born again, basically again. We're all born on this earth, but then we're born again when we we believe in Jesus. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother, mother's womb, and be born? So, those of you that are wondering about being born again, these are the kind of questions that you might be asking. And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born anew. So the first time you're born, you know, we're all born on the earth as man, except for Adam and Eve, of course. We're all born on the earth. And then, but it says you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wills. And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know whence it comes or whether it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So, all of us that are born of the Spirit, it's like no one can say it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. It just happens when God wants it to happen. Nicodemus said to him, How can this be? Jesus answered him, Teacher of, he answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand this? Truly, truly, so there must be something in the teaching of Israel that 
explains this even further. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things, so what is, who is Jesus talking about when he says, truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. So we, I mean, I, I'm thinking it means God, is him and God. He's speaking what God has told him, we, when he says we. Because at that time, Jesus was the one that knew. His disciples really didn't know. Only Jesus knew. Okay, so I'm not sure about the we, but I think it's God and and. Jesus so and bear witness to what we have seen but you do not receive our testimony if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe now this is an earthly thing he's telling us how we're born again how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things so how can this be it's what Nicodemus said um, Jesus said the wind blows and it lands on and it goes so it's every way with the, the, the spirit and Nicodemus how can this be and Jesus basically tells them that he's already telling earthly things how can you tell them you know the heavenly things so um, maybe those are some of the things we don't understand why the wind blows where it blows and why God does it that way now one has ascended into heaven, but he, no one has ascended into heaven. No one, that's what he's saying. No one has ascended into heaven. But he who descended from heaven, the sons of man, and as Moses lifted up the son of man. So he's basically saying, no one has ascended into heaven but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. So he's talking about himself, I think. So that means that no one else has gone, ascended into heaven. Jesus came here in the flesh and then he went back. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man he lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Okay, so whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So the word may is a little bit different than shall. May is kind of like it's an offering. They may, if they believe they may, that could be an offer. The eternal life it doesn't say whoever believes in him will have eternal life it says may have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life God did that so we wouldn't perish he gave his only begotten son that's the reason why he gave his only son that whoever believes in him so for God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him he who believes in him is not condemned he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light least his deeds should be exposed but he who does what is true comes to the light that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God after this, Jesus and the disciples went into the land of Judah. There he remained with them and baptized. 
John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem because there was much water there and people came and were baptized for John had not yet been put in prison. Now the discussion arose between John's disciples and a Jew over purifying and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you bore witness, here he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, no one can receive anything except what is given him from heaven. So just remember that line, if someone, you know, is doing better than you or in, in a certain way, especially if they're doing better by preaching the word, what they said here is, remember that no one can receive anything except what is given from heaven. You yourself bear me witness. So in other words, if the churches are baptizing and they're baptizing a lot of people, then we should be glad for that. And, you know, hopefully they're doing it the right way. Teaching them to repent and teaching them that they're being, that, that, that make sure that they believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for our sins and, and that they baptize in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No one can receive anything except which is given to him in heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now full. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth, and the earth he speaks. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. He who receives his testimony sets his seal to this that God is true for he whom God has sent utters the words of God for it is not by measure that he gives the spirit see here's the thing it's not by measure that he gives the spirit the father loves the son and the, and has given all things unto his hand he who believes in the son has eternal life he who does not obey the son shall not see life but the wrath of God rests upon him. So it's, that's what it said there. So the first step, of course, you got you need to believe in God, but then now you, you need to understand about Jesus coming here and to believe in Jesus and that God sent him and that everything that Jesus speaks is from God. Okay, let's close in prayer. Thank you, God, for these words to energize our Holy Spirit, to strengthen our body and to... Help us to love you with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And also to love our, our brothers and sisters as ourselves. And we pray that our kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Jesus' name I ask for this. Amen. Okay, so just do what Jesus tells you to do, and you'll be okay. And how do you do that? Start reading the Bible. And start developing fellowship with other Christians. Read the Gospels first. John is my favorite. I like John because it's more of a like a spiritual type, and it's, I love hearing Jesus talk. That's, and they all do that. Jesus is talking in all of them, but for some reason I just love the way John is. So. All right, God bless you. God bless you. I love you, and have a great day and a great life. Amen.